Hi and welcome to Wrong Way. And finally, we have an unboxing again. This is the production model in motion V12. So, let me unbox you more about it. Wrong way. As you can see, we are finally in the new home. This is the space you will see in the videos more often now. Finally, a workbench for working on wheels, showing stuff. Here will be the wheels and, you know, we'll have some sort of rail underneath to put them in because now it's very difficult with the flower pots. But this is exciting and I wanted to just let you know about it. So this uh, Emotion V12 is, of course, provided by myewheel.com. If you want to buy such a wheel, feel free to use my coupon code. Wrong way to get 5% off. I also do receive a kickback from these orders. And I know we see the Commander on other channels and the Abrams, but here is the V12, but don't worry, we will get to the new wheels as well. A Commander is already on the way to me, the Abrams as well, so no worries. But this is a wheel that I'm actually also really excited about. I, I like the V12, I think it's a solid wheel, and finally we can you know, show it to the public, see how it behaves, not when I have to hide it anywhere for, uh, in, when riding in the night. And yeah, I'm just pretty excited to see what it's all about. All right, let's open up, open it up. Pretty nice foam. And a charger. This is a very different charger from the one that we've seen on the um, prototype. It's way bigger, but it has no fan. And I'm a, and I'm a fan of that. because, you know, chargers like, like these from the veteran Sherman even, I can actually plug it in and show you what they sound like after a while or if they get damaged when shipping. This is pretty annoying. So, I'm a fan of fanless chargers. This is a 2.3 amp charger, so charging takes up nine hours. Pretty long, but I guess enough to charge it overnight. I wish it would be faster, but that's what we get. I think it's still a pretty good solution for like everyday commuters and riders. Uh, but if you want to charge faster, I'll get into that. I'll get into that in a second. Okay, let's get the tape this out. No crumbly things. I like that. And here it is. Now, mind you, this wheel was already used. Uh, this is a production model that was used in Italy. But nevertheless, it's a production model, so yeah, that's why it looks maybe a bit scuffed up. How should I? Maybe I should take the whole thing out? <gasps> yeah, 29 kilos of wheel! It's almost like a skirt, you have to like pull it down. Should I pull it up? Maybe. Alright. We get anything else, we get an instruction manual. And yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's the Motion V12. Now, there isn't, I think, any super major changes to the wheel, but let me see if I can find them all on the production model. Well, first of all, now we have a button with an orange ring around it, so it's easier to see. It wasn't so easy to see initially. And we're in transport mode now, and we have to turn the transport mode off. Where is it? Yeah. Boom. And the display looks very similar, but maybe just a tiny bit more uh, sensitive. So we have here, you know, all of the features, all of the settings that you can select, and there's even more settings in the app. So yeah, I'm curious how it will perform in the broad daylight, if it will be as visible as the old one, or if it will be brighter. In the night, very good to see. In the day, I like the Sherman more. Next thing they changed is the trolley. And now it just doesn't like, it doesn't go up that much, because before it was like that. From from this side, I don't know. Feels feels a little awkward. Maybe from this side. Yeah, this this feels much better. This is very similar to the trolley handle angle of the V10, and yeah, of the V10. So this this feels actually pretty pretty good. Maybe the, I wish it would be maybe wider or just a bit more like ergonomic or you know like the King Song handles to have them a bit longer so that it's like easier to spin it around but yeah i guess that's definitely better than the stock msp which i didn't don't even have anymore so i guess that's a small improvement a bit of a bigger 
uh, rubber piece here. And apart from that, the LED should be also brighter, but as you can see here, they are, like this is not a tail light. This is really not a tail light. Like compare it to the Monster Pro here. This is like the brightness difference. Like you can't even tell that this is on. on the camera, can you maybe come closer? Maybe then you can see it. So yeah, you can't even tell that, that this is on. Is this like even full power? Okay, it gets a bit brighter when you brake, but like compared to that, this is much brighter on the, on the Monster Pro. Maybe while we are talking about the uh, lights, we can also check out the side lights, the side RGBs. They also look a bit brighter, but I guess they will be visible in the night, more like of a mood lighting sort of. Definitely not as a thing that will, you know, uh, make drivers look to the side and see you. I think it's more of a mood thing. And now we have also the brighter ones in the front. Now here I can see quite a bit of a difference with the blue lights. Maybe the blue diodes are just a bit more powerful. But yeah, I think this is pretty cool improvement over the pretty dim lights that I had before on the Motion V. Maybe they ch change the plastic here more, but yeah. That's that. Anyways, let's move on to the back as well. And because here we have a different flap now, almost look like a extension of a mudguard. And under this flap, we have the GX16-5 port and a USB-A and USB-C for charging your phone. So no twin charge ports here, but I don't really consider it as big of an issue. Even, oh yeah, sorry, the new scooters we have there just turned off. By the way, scooter review coming up. New way forward, um, the new Cookie 3. It's really KQI, but I like to call it Cookie because it's easier. We have the single charge port here. And honestly, I have several chargers to charge up my wheels. And usually I just use one. So for example, here's my 5 amp that I use usually for the Sherman and the Monster Pro. And this would charge up the V11 in what, uh, around three to four hours. So I can use this charger to charge up the V11, I mean the V12. Um, the, then I also have this seven and a half, whoops, Ugh. seven and a half amp charger. This is the charger I usually take on trips because it's still, I mean, it's still bulky, but not extremely bulky. It would charge the V12 up in around two to three hours. So this is like the, Thing that I mostly take on trips. I don't take usually two chargers. So uh, the V12 can take up to 10 amps, I believe, uh, if the both batteries are also properly balanced with the BMS is allowing it to do so. But I think with the single charge port and even like buying an external seven and a half amp charger, you are like totally good to go. Let's see if it accepts that. Uh, let's see. So yeah, it's charging now with the seven and a half amp charger easy peasy lemon squeezy so yeah i don't really consider the lack of a second charge board a big issue and on big and bigger wheels like the sherman or on the on the monster pro i think it's necessary but here if we have just one it's okay it would be nicer of course to have two but the charging limit on such battery packs is also usually around eight amps or 10 amps not really recommended to charge at like 13 so no big deal Anyways, uh, we wanted to also check out the front light, which should have also changed. So, how do we do that? I think we need to take the Sherman out. Okay, I'll just put this to the side for a little bit. Ah, yeah, kickstand. I was looking for flower pots, but I don't need any. Maybe we just need a kickstand for every wheel instead of like making flower pots. All right, so this is like, usually what I say is like a good light in EUCs. This is the Sherman light. As you can see, there is a big dot in, in the front, which shoots a light very far forward. And then you have like the outer edges, which uh, show a bit of light to, you know, outside of the street. There's also the V11 light, which was really great. Um, but I guess that's not the subject now. So let's compare it to the V12. And I have to lift it up, I think, to get the full beam. So this is the Sherman light and 
these are both beams, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> these are both beams uh, of the V12. Now let's see how they behave when they're riding. Pretty good! So yeah, I guess that the light did improve a bit. Now naturally, I will have to do some more testing to see how it works in um, in the night. But as you can see also here on the, on the, I don't know, on the counter here, the lights are also specially shaped. So there's like a bit less light on the left. Can you see that from there? A bit more to the right and like a narrow beam on the middle. So this is the low beam. This is the high beam, obviously it's a bit higher and also still a bit more light to the right than to the left as it should be. Uh, but not in <laughs> the traffic in the UK. <laughs> the UK should be the other way around. Uh, and here both beams like that. Looks, looks like it won't be annoying uh, pedestrians too much, especially the, the low beam. Yeah, looks pretty cool. Now just as a side note, because we are already talking so much about lights, I'll show you the light on the new scooter. So this is in my eyes how every light on an electric device should look like. This is the perfect setup for a light. Look at it. Very bright LED ring, could be any shape. Take note, like the V11 for example. The V11 had that too. And then you have the additional beam, which is very similar in terms of lighting of, uh, to a motorcycle light. You can also check out with the camera, if you, look, if you are here, the, the beam shouldn't be blinding at all. There should be no flares. And if you go down, the flare should start even a bit lower now yeah. and the beam is like this there is a thick strip here which is the sort of shining far away and then lower you have uh, the light that shows you the which is closer to you so with this light you can also select how the angle is sorry here like the on a Sherman which you can't do on the V12. I wish there was some sort of setup on the V12, like on the Sherman and the upcoming S20, where you can also set up the angle of the front light, because if you have your pedals tilted up, all the light's gonna sh shine up. If, if you like them tilted down, like I do, then the light will, won't sh shine as far away. So, I guess good job, v the V12 in motion, but take note for us from a scooter company. I thought that's a thing I would never say. Or yeah, or, or new, just, just make an EUC. Please, I can help you. I work for free. <laughs> Did you see, by the way, the separate lights turn on and off? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, so I guess we have covered all the changes. I think also this pedal angle is just a tad steeper, but yeah, the in motion to have very flat paddles. Not a fan of that and they're not adjustable angle. Hopefully I'll be able to get some Nilanova for that, but actually I'm not sure looking at this weird shape of the L-hanger here. Uh, yeah, there are also no magnets here, but they seem to just be fine. The pads seem to be a bit, yeah, a bit thicker as well, a bit more cushy-wushy. And so I guess that covers all of the changes on the V12. Other than that, this is the only way how you can get a wheel with a IP rating that goes 70 kilometers an hour. Now, I think this is a pretty solid wheel if you want to have something fast with big range and you don't want to get a Godway, like a RS, which is not waterproof. There's an IP rating for the whole wheel, which is IPX5, and there's a rating for the battery compartment, which is IPX7. Uh, and even if something happens there, because I heard of a similar case where there was rust somewhere, they're responsible for that. So this is, I guess, under the, under the warranty. Uh, other than that, some other cool features are the Bluetooth speakers, which are front and back. I really like the sound of them and they're really funny stereo because stereo is usually left and right. I mean, that's the definition of stereo, but here they're like front and back. So you hear the song sort of like sideways, which is kind of funny. There's still a lift switch. Uh, there's the, uh, as I said before, 
the nice kickstand, which is a lot better than on the V11 because it's wider. The V11 just like was tipping over when you looked at it. I'm just very curious to check it out a bit more. But of course, after riding my favorite scooters in the world. Something I forgot to mention before is that uh, the pedals here are adjustable and here it can go in, I think one centimeter increments, higher and lower on the L hangers. And those are held by these four screws here. And this L hanger also looks better than the um, prototype one. Now my concern is here if those screws don't get too dirty over time and if they're like powerful enough to hold you in place. These are just four screws. So later on I'll try to also check out the, uh, the different settings here of the height. Here we can see them in the back. Uh, to see how the wheel also performs in these two other settings. And the one before I was always riding on the highest setting but might as well try the other ones. Now some time has passed from the last shot, so I've also mounted a shred light now here on top. Uh, so this will be a proper light to have on this uh, on this wheel. And yeah, all in all, this build quality looks pretty solid. I like the plastics; feels like a big chunk. And there's also this bumper in the front and in the back, which will hopefully prevent any big damage when the wheel, wheel falls flat on its in motion phase. The tire that is here is a CST, uh, I can't remember the right, 6188, I think something like that. Um, this tire, pretty sticky, but it gets uh, used up fairly quickly, like 2,000, 3,000 kilometers. So I'd be also curious to see how this wheel would perform with a Kenda, uh, which my friend has on the Nikola, which is quite a bit better than these stock tires. I wish that all EUCs came with a Kenda tire, I've come to see that Kanda is just better than CST. Also, I'm soon changing the tire on my MSP from a CST to a Kanda, so yeah, that's that. Anyways, I think that's it about the Emotion V12 unboxing. I think I've told you about everything I knew. So if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon. It's perfect timing. <laughs>